Hey, it's Django from Calvander Sound. Today we're talking about one of my favorite guitar players, Mark Ribot, who made his name playing with Tom Waits. Specifically, we're talking about his solo on Jockey Full of Bourbon, which is off the album Rain Dogs. We discussed how to play the rhythm part in a previous lesson where we talked about muting. using the rake and other things like that. You can check that out in part one of this lesson series. Today, we've gone electric because we're really thinking about the guitar solo and specifically the solo on the record. Uh, I've got a transcription for it available at calvandersound.com, my website, and you can get that there to kind of follow along. But I wanna break it down just a little bit so we can just look at what makes this solo tick and then you can kind of practice it on your own. The short answer is rhythm. This tune is coming from kind of an Afro-Cuban kind of beat. Um, and in that kind of music, rhythm is everything. Uh, it's not all about flashy runs of notes or anything like that. It's about how do you take a few notes and really make them count. And uh, Marc Ribot is brilliant at this. If you look at the opening phrase of the, uh, of the solo, it's like this. It's just two notes. In fact, it's the fifth of the chord, which is an F minor chord. So it's, it's a C and an F, and that's it. It just goes back and forth. But between those two notes, he creates this very insistent and driving kind of lead. Now what's happening here is you can hear it's an arpeggio, so in other words, it's going through the notes of the chord. It's the root, the flat three, and the five, which makes it a minor chord, which it is. It's over an F minor, so it goes. Now, he's ending on this, he's ending on this B flat. Now, to understand why he's doing that, we have to look at what the chords are. So, it's, it's F minor for the first part. So the B flat must have some sort of significance with the new chord. The new chord is a C7. So in a C, a B flat is the flat seven. And what that does is it makes the chord a seven chord rather than just a major. Um, and so it's actually kind of the most significant note of the chord. And Rebo knows this, of course, and he resolves to the note that's going to really define the next chord. And then he lays out because space in between uh, your phrases is incredibly important. Uh, so he has this very busy opening phrase to kind of claim his uh, space for his solo, and then he clears out in between. <laughs> From there, we have uh, moving through this new idea, which is this descending line using both chromatic, in other words, half step movements, and then, and whole steps, and then taking the whole thing on the road to the next string. So when you come up with a new idea like this, you don't want to just abandon it. You want to restate it in some way. And this way, he's taking the same idea, but he's moving it up. And then he moves it again, but the way he's going to do it is to kind of recall that opening rhythm. Because that rhythm is, it's very similar to that opening kind of staccato uh, rhythm. So from the beginning we have,
taking the same idea. Now he's going to go back to his original phrase with the these two notes, the F and the C, um, and he's going to change the rhythm instead of uh, instead of which was his original idea. He's turning it around. So he's taking that same original idea uh, and and then coming back to it and creating a variation. So he's switching the order. And then he's doing uh, the same, the second idea, which was that kind of chromatic descending line. So, uh, then we've got uh, the C7 chord, and instead of repeating one of the lines he's done before, he's going to join the bass. He's going to say, which is just playing a C major arpeggio. One, three, five, one. And then he's back to his chromatic movement, but a but a big long one to finish up the solo. So it's still kind of moving down the scale with some chromatic motion, half step motion. And then finishing up with one kind of flashy uh, arpeggio. And notice he's ending again on that B flat. Uh, but this time, the chord underneath is actually B-flat. So he's kind of, again, very cleverly restating an earlier phrase where he ended on a B-flat when the chord changed, but instead of it being the flat 7, which it was for the over the C7 chord, it's the B-flat minor, which is the beginning of the chorus. So one last time. perfect guitar solo. Um, <clears throat> what I hope that you'll do is really dig into this and learn it, but then also uh, try to create your own variations on it. And what we really want to pick up on is the way that he uses uh, just a couple of notes and a, a shifting kind of rhythmic pattern to uh, make a solo really drive. And then uh, the way he also comes back to phrases later in the solo that he would played earlier and either plays them the same way or plays them in a new way. Uh, this kind of uh, returning to the same ideas is what good improvisation is made of. So I hope this is fun and helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Please subscribe to my channel. And you can also uh, visit me at calvandersound.com where you find materials that go along with all my lessons and find out how to get in touch if you're interested in, uh, in doing online lessons or uh, or even in person. Um, so thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.